Live from Norfolk, Virginia Beach, and all of Hampton Roads, this is your News Channel 3, home of Triple Doppler Radar, right now at 5. I am Pat McReynolds, live in Yorktown for the 225th anniversary of the British surrender to General George Washington. We are going to have much more of the ceremony and celebration coming up. And it's Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Now our experts are in our studio taking your calls, helping you get involved in the battle against breast cancer. And right now, one of the seven cities says it's ready to bring in trash from New York for a hefty price. Another city says it will kill the environment. Now it's a nasty trash fight. Good evening, I'm Barbara Sierra. And I'm Pat McReynolds, live in Yorktown. Hi there, Pat. We're going to check in with you in just a moment, but we begin with a big trash fight. City leaders in Portsmouth want to bring in trash from out of state. Now, while people living in Chesapeake worry that that plant could be an environmental bomb. Tonight, your News Channel 3's Chesapeake reporter, Lisa Godley, has the story. I've been sitting here since about 11 o'clock. I haven't caught anything yet. Herbert Kennedy loves to fish on the section of the Elizabeth River near the Jordan Bridge. And he's not happy that barges hauling trash from New York City could soon be passing by on a regular basis, even if the garbage is in waterproof containers. I think New York should take care of its own garbage. I don't think it should be put off on somebody else. Kennedy isn't alone. A group called CAPIT, which stands for Citizens Alliance to Prevent Imported Trash, is also opposed. Spokesperson Ray Connor says they're not only concerned about how the trash will be inspected, but the odor and the fact that the transfer station would be located directly across from an area Chesapeake is trying hard to revitalize. And that's not all. We're going to be faced with building a new landfill four years earlier than what we would have because of New York City garbage uh, taking up the capacity in the incinerator. Lisa Godley reporting. Meantime, in Virginia Beach, police say an armed and dangerous man is off the streets. Police tell us this guy, John Lee McCoy, turned himself in early this morning. Beach police say he pulled up to a car and opened fire in broad daylight Sunday on Independence Boulevard. McCoy is being held in the Virginia Beach Correctional Center without bond. Also in Virginia Beach, kids now have more time to get booster shots to stay in school. State law requires all sixth graders to get the DTAP shot. It protects against tetanus, diphtheria, and whooping cough. The deadline was December 1st. Now it's being extended to December 4th. Now, once your child gets the vaccination, you need to take the documentation to the school's guidance office. The Virginia Beach Health Department will be giving the shots free until 7 tonight. There are some exceptions to the rule, folks. So, students who can't get the shot because of religious or health reasons are exempt, but parents must sign a waiver. Tonight, several road projects in the Commonwealth are shut down. The Hampton Roads Metropolitan Planning Organization says money is the problem, just not enough of it. They put the brakes on three big projects, including a third crossing across the Chesapeake Bay. The new 460 from Suffolk to Petersburg and more lanes for Interstate 64. Hampton Roads, what do you think? Are leaders doing enough to fix the problems? And what can be done? Did they kill the wrong road projects? We'll head to our website, WTKR.com. Click on your three cents at the bottom of the page and send us your opinion. Meanwhile, watch out for some delays on the roads tonight, specifically if you plan on crossing the James River Bridge. VDOT crews started test lifts earlier today and plan on keeping the tests going until 9.15 tonight. Traffic will be stopped for up to 15 minutes each time. The lifts are part of routine maintenance. And if you're looking for an alternate route, try the HRBT or the Monitor Merrimack. Now, whether it's test lifts or accidents, count on your News Channel 3 to keep you updated on the road conditions 24 hours a day. Here's a live look at the roads from our SkyCam 3 network every morning before work. Just tune into your News Channel 3 this morning for breaking traffic news every 10 minutes on the threes. Join traffic reporters Jennifer Cooper on the south side and Ricardo Major on the peninsula every weekday morning starting at 5 a.m. And you can look at the entire SkyCam 3 network anytime just by going to WTKR.com. And if you're away from your computer, no worries. Grab your internet-ready cell phone or PDA and see all the SkyCam 3 network cameras at 3onthego.com. Military families 
know what it's like to wait. And that's exactly what they did this morning as fog delayed the homecoming for 250 active duty sailors and reservists. Your News Channel 3's Priscilla Monte was there as they waited for the plane carrying Navy cargo handlers to arrive this afternoon. Hours after Dad's plane was supposed to land at Naval Station Norfolk, Conrad Pickford and his four siblings peer through the fog. Fog. Lots of fog. Not what you want to see. You want to see Daddy out there. Yeah. Inside the band plays. Lakeys practices jumping on one foot while her brother Zachary does his homework. I'm adding and subtracting. They've added several hours to the eight months of separation. The 250 active duty sailors and reservists from Naval SG Delta have been handling cargo in Iraq and Kuwait, delivering pallets like these filled with ammunition and life-saving supplies to troops on the ground. B.J. Pickford proudly says her husband and his unit have saved civilian and military lives. As a mother of five children, I think about the 30 years under um, Saddam Hussein, and I think about how many mothers and children just needed someone to help them. This day, all these families need is someone to help clear the fog so their loved one's plane can land. We want him to come home as soon as possible and cannot believe the fog today. By late morning, the fog lifts, and then at 12.30, the view in the sky, a heavenly sight for these families. I'm glad I went. I volunteered to go, and um, I just missed all these kids and my family so much, but uh, we're proud of what we did over there, so we enjoyed it. How hard was it to wait those extra five hours this morning? <laughs> That, that killed us. That was longer than six months over there. Welcome home at Naval Station Norfolk. Priscilla Monti, your News Channel 3. I'm sure it's great to be back. Now, these reservists and active duty sailors still can't go home just yet. They have another assignment on base for the next few days. And also in your military watch, the U.S. military admits the bloodshed in Iraq is increasing despite increased security measures, and the U.S. troops are getting caught in the middle. As your News Channel 3's Aline Sergani shows us, Americans are now working with Iraqi authorities to refocus their operations. Two months after Operation Together Forward took aim at hot spots in Baghdad, a top American general says the joint U.S.-Iraqi operation has not met overall expectations. We are working very closely with the government of Iraq to determine how to best to refocus our efforts. The U.S. military says attacks in Baghdad have risen 22 percent in the first three weeks of the holy month of Ramadan. The surge in violence has hit U.S. troops particularly hard. At least 73 American service members have died this month, putting October on the course to be the deadliest month for U.S. forces in nearly two years. And it's even worse for Iraqi civilians. At least 12 were killed and dozens wounded in the northern city of Mosul today when a police station was hit by numerous suicide car bombs. Also in Mosul, General Caldwell says suicide car bombs hit U.S. military convoys. No word yet on casualties. The violence is indeed disheartening. The situation is so bad, Iraq's leaders have reached out to an unexpected source, asking the rebel Shiite cleric Mukata al-Sadr to help control the violence. The spike in violence comes just a few weeks before midterm elections here at home, where the unpopularity of the war is jeopardizing the GOP's control of Congress. Aline Sergani, CBS News, Washington. A few Marine Reserve combat battalions will once again be called up for service in Iraq. Defense Secretary Donald Rumsfeld approved the plan, which will take effect in 2008. A senior Marine official says the first group will likely remobilize next year for training. This is the first return trip for Reserve combat battalions. And now it's time for tonight's rant the debate to stay or go in Iraq. Now, right now, October is on track to be the bloodiest month for coalition forces in nearly two years. Today, President Bush rejected two ideas aimed at ending the war. The suggestions included dividing Iraq into regions based on religion and bringing a batch of troops home every month. Well, is it time to consider those kinds of options? Should we cut and run or stay the course? How would you handle the situation in Iraq? Send us your rants right now. Log on to WTKR.com and click on the rant, and then watch your news channel 3 at 11 to hear Hampton Roads sound off. Well, it's been 225 years since the British surrendered to American and French allied forces in the Revolutionary War. 
And guess what? Cause for celebration. They are partying hard, marking the event. And your News Channel 3's Pat McReynolds is live in Yorktown for the start of the anniversary of the victory at Yorktown. Quite a celebration, hmm, Pat? Oh, it definitely is. In fact, there have, it's been going on all day. There are already thousands of tourists here, Barbara. In fact, as you mentioned, 225 years ago today, American and French troops laid siege on the city of Yorktown, surrounding the British troops and cutting off their supplies. And in less than a month of constant bombardment, the British general, General Lord Charles Cornwallis, surrendered to General George Washington. And of course, it was that victory that really founded our country. And for the next four days here in Yorktown, we are going to celebrate. Thousands of tourists are already here. And this morning, they enjoyed a parade through town, colonial-style fife and drum chorus preceded modern high school marching bands. And then dignitaries from all over the world graced the opening ceremony for the anniversary celebration, including Virginia Senator John Warner to the foreign defense minister of France. Of course, France played a huge role in this victory. Along with their warships, they actually had more regular army troops here than the Continental Army, led by the Marquis de Lafayette. It is all the beginning of four days of amazing events right here, including music, booths, reenactments, everything going on from here down to the waterfront. And you know, we would be remiss if we didn't mention the vital role that the German military commanders played in this victory, and of course, in the founding of our country. And we have a very special guest here with us today. It was Baron von Steuben that actually trained all of our troops at the Valley Forge, but this is a direct family descendant, Henning Baron von Steuben. Thank you so much for being here. Well, thank you very much for being on the show. Uh, I'm uh, the president of the German Family Association, the Von Steuben Family Association. And I came over here and uh, to join the uh, celebration here. Yeah. Well, I, first of all, before we get to that and why you're here, because I know we want to talk about right. that, but we have a wonderful pictorial illustration of your family and your family's military history. Maybe you can explain this for us That's a little right. bit. That's uh, right. I brought this for a gift for the board here. These are seven relatives of mine who were on the anniversary celebration in 1881, you know. Mm -hmm. Three of them, all these were um, Prussian officers. This is a portrait of the U.S. General, Frederick William von Steuben. And these are seven relatives of mine. This is my great-grandfather, Kuno von Steuben. He was a young lieutenant when he joined the uh, uh, celebration here in Yorktown. And we should, we should say that the U.S. general pictured there in the center there actually fought here at Yorktown and commanded some of the uh, American troops. That's that right? right. He was a drill master. He drilled the American troops at uh, Valley Forge and was one of the division commanders here in Yorktown at the Battle of Yorktown. You wonderful. Know, that's well, it. Let me ask you then, obviously, other than to carry on your wonderful family legacy, why was it so important for you to be here today? Well, for two reasons. Uh, um, on one hand, to uh, follow the tracks of my ancestor, you know, that would be interesting for me personally. And on the other hand, to express the close relation uh, to the American nation, uh, my family's relation to the American nation, and to the meaning that's symbolized here. You know, that's it. Definitely. Well, we definitely appreciate you joining our show here today, mm -hmm. and we hope that you enjoy the celebration. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for being the show. All right. And, Barbara, we're going to have several more guests throughout our 90 minutes of news here, so make sure you stick around. We're going to have a lot of fun here in Yorktown. Enjoy yourself. See you in a few minutes. Well, tonight, some really good news for folks wanting to pay less money for prescription drugs. Walmart's trial $4 drug plan expands today, and some folks in our viewing area are about to get a big break. Researchers say they may have a way to slow down Alzheimer's disease. Find out why they're promoting getting high. And we're working on making strides against breast cancer. It's all about awareness. Information is power, folks, so call us right now. 757-626-0303 to get involved or just get information about next week's breast cancer walk. I'm Chief Meteorologist Mike Harvey at the Victory at Yorktown Celebration. A few high clouds have moved in. I'll let you know if that means rain for us in Hampton Roads. That's coming up here in just a few minutes. And I'm Kurt Williams live in our Virginia Beach newsroom at Town Center. Coming up new at 5.30, new developments in the scandal involving former Republican Congressman Mark Foley. A priest has now come forward admitting that decades ago he had a relationship with Foley when he was a boy. And this priest is saying some pretty shocking things. Plus, a day of fishing ends with an 81-year-old man in the hospital. A stingray got into his boat, stabs him in the chest. Find out how he survived the attack. That is new at 5.30. On tonight's Survivor. No choking! You've never seen the castaways compete like this. Get off my neck! The conspiracy is much bigger than I can picture. But the biggest pro could be the game. Both tribes will vote somebody out. New Survivor CBS Tonight. 
Your News Channel 3 is investigating towing troubles. More than 240 cars have been towed from a parking lot at the beach. Where is this towing hotspot and how can you prevent your car from disappearing? Your News Channel 3 uncovers the answers tonight at 11 after Shark. George Allen. Scandals, slurs, and insults. Now after Allen's dark side is exposed, he wants the race to be decided on issues. Well, here's his record. Allen voted against additional body armor for those serving in Iraq. Allen's taken thousands from big oil and voted to give them billions in tax breaks. And Allen's repeatedly voted for pay raises for himself, but against raising the minimum wage. George Allen is wrong on the issues, too. The Democratic Senatorial Campaign Committee is responsible for the content of this advertising. Joe loves oatmeal crisp cereal because it's made from crispy, delicious flakes, crunchy oatmeal clusters, and juicy raisins. Now he's discovered that oatmeal crisp has ingredients that may reduce the risk of high blood pressure and stroke and may lower cholesterol. That's good news for Joe. Uh, honey? Very good news. <laughs> Oatmeal Crisp, the great tasting cereal with ingredients that may reduce the risk of high blood pressure and stroke. Love it with all your heart. I'm Phil Kellum. Securing our country and defeating Al-Qaeda are our top priorities. But Congress's incompetence and misplaced priorities are preventing our success in this mission. My plan? Adopt the recommendations of the 9-11 Commission, enact tough anti-terror surveillance programs, and capture or kill terrorists who intend to harm us. I approve this message because we must change Washington to secure the safety of America. Sudden craving for steak? Then head to Golden Corral for our new Applewood Sirloin Filet. Tender, juicy sirloin wrapped in Applewood bacon, along with cheddar stuffed potatoes, steak fries, and a blue cheese lettuce wedge. Every night on the buffet, because you never know when the craving will hit. Golden Corral, everyone deserves a good meal. Thousands of our finest facing danger in Iraq. What kind of person would oppose access to health insurance for all our National Guard members and reservists? Thelma Drake. Last year in Congress, Thelma Drake voted against expanding health care for reserve and National Guard soldiers returning from war. But Drake took a congressional pay raise. Thousands of soldiers serving, looking for help. And one Congresswoman, Thelma Drake, looking out for herself. The Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee is responsible for the content of this advertising. Scientists may have found a rather surprising way to slow the progression of Alzheimer's. A new study presented at the annual meeting of the Society for Neuroscience came up with some interesting data. An experiment on rats found a compound in marijuana can actually slow memory loss associated with the disease. Alzheimer's has been linked to inflammation in the brain, and researchers believe an element in marijuana lowers that inflammation. The finding could one day lead to new treatments. A Walmart's expanding its generic drug program outside of Florida into the Tar Heel State. The program sells prescription drugs for a discount price of $4. Fourteen more states get the program just two weeks after it started in Florida. Virginia isn't part of the expansion, but as we said, North Carolina is. We're told Walmart plans on eventually taking the program nationwide. Now, October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and we are hoping that you're going to come out and help make strides against the disease. Now this is one of the many Making Strides walks going on this month. This is New York City this past weekend where 60,000 people came out to help raise awareness and money for breast cancer research. In fact, the organization has raised $4.3 million since 1996. And hey, you have a chance to help make strides too. Here is a live look in Studio B here at your News Channel 3 in downtown Norfolk Studios. All the ladies here are breast cancer, actually cancer survivors. They're part of a group of ACS called Reach to Recovery. Now these folks are here taking their valuable time to take your calls right now. They're helping you to get involved in the local event. It's about raising awareness and fundraising, but just come on out. The number to call right now is 757-626-0303. Making Strides walks are scheduled across the country to raise awareness, as I said, and also raise money for research. The fundraiser here in Hampton Roads is on...